So is it? It's not. Uh, it is on us, dude. Well, if there's a like good thing. Have a look on the In 2015, pilots flying oh off God. the east coast of America spotted this. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. This anti-gravity concept is taking almost the whole part and every thought in the technology when it comes to how they operate without burning any fuel or using the air propellers by using uh, the electromagnetic propulsion. And some of these ideas were developed in the past by these famous scientists we actually know like Nikola Tesla, Viktor Schauber, Vito Grebenikov, Otis T. Carr, Thomas Hansen and many more. So that happened but maybe not everyone believed that these objects were real. And here's where the UFOs come around. These objects are capable of light speeds, shifting of dimensions, writing of turns, and other several phenomena so we couldn't be able to mention right now. But that is not actually the topic we are going to talk about today. In this video we are going to talk about this man called Alexei Chekhov. He invented a platform he called a gravifier and a lot of you guys talked about it. I also created a video a few weeks ago about this platform. I was analyzing the facts that could help this platform to revitate. But if you didn't check it out, uh, at the end of this video, remember to check out its link in the description. So this video contains some of the facts that prove that a laser Chikukov device was real and some uh, topics that matches 100% with other frame platforms we actually recognize. So if you want to cover some of these facts and reveal the truth about this platform, then watch this whole video till the end. Let's get started. First of all, what do you know about this platform and what do you think make it gravitate? Things can go a little far but could be better if we actually know what we are currently analyzing. So let me know your thoughts in comments. For each one of you guys who doesn't know what the gravifier looks like, who's the somatic Alicia Chukukov provided? We charge the upward disc with positive charge and the downward disc with negative charge but definitely you don't have to consider the circuit here. According to the experiments that have done like uh, 3 years about this uh, Freiburg circuits, you cannot get the electrostatic charge that ionizes the ear when using the polarized capacitors like these ones. And that is actually what Alessi lied to us in the circuit. He mentioned that uh, the positive polarity of the capacitor holds the positive charge and the negative polarity holds the negative charge. But let me tell you what we are currently doing here. We are converting the AC-DC electrostatic charge into a pure dielectric current charge by charging up the DC capacitors and when it comes to how the electrostatic charges are used in the gravifier, that is not actually possible. So Alexei Chekhov used this circuit to confuse us a little bit on how his platform was powered. But that is not a problem because we actually figured out the streak. The gravifier has three Ds. The upward disc and the downward disc which are charged electrostatically and the middle disc which is charged by tesla coil positive. I don't know if I mentioned this in my latest videos but this guy was a genius. And the only reason I'm saying this is that he tried to combine some of the complicated designs of these uh, flying objects like ARV, OTCX1 and the SEG into a simple and easier to analyze design uh, which is composed of six permanent magnets that corrupts with the middle aluminium disc to produce electromagnetic fields. The disc Alexei Chekhov uses seems like they have some structures on them. I don't know why he used those structures but when you look closely on the back shells, they also have the same structures. Then let's get to the acoustic vibration. We actually know that when you set the right frequency, you can revitate little objects. So according to the ability of the ultrasonic sound, Alexei Chekhov used this little effect to help him increase the effects of gravitation. But ultrasonic sound is not that much needed to gravitate the gravifier. Because Alexei Chekhov has some of his videos where he got the gravifier to levitate without using the ultrasonic sounds. For example, let's check this one out. I will use poses and captions to help you figure out yourself. So let's check it out. Один вращается на встречу друг другу. И вот наша основная цель это высоковольтный генератор и прочая дребедень. Ну что ж, давайте попробуем ее запустить. Сейчас уставлюсь поудобней. Начинаем запускать. You also have to keep in mind that uh, this 
is the Omri Creep among the others that Alessia Chokuko proved that this prototype do not totally depend on this effect uh, of ultrasonic sound but it doesn't mean we don't know what it is capable of especially when we apply it to some drops of water those drops start to act in a different way and when you drop a little ball inside this high frequency sound it looks like it gets stuck in there so this effect is really needed too let's keep watching Вернее, еще даже антигравитацию запускаем наш блокинг генератор. Этот блок содержит срочный трансформатор от, от телевизора и такой импровизированный умножитель. Сейчас минутку. Запускаем и подключаем наш умножитель. Есть. Пошел контакт. Сейчас, минутку. Сейчас будет намагничивание полей и будет эффект антигравитации. Ой, сейчас, минутку. Нужно подождать несколько секунд. Надеюсь, всем видно. Maybe you're wondering how this prototype really took off the ground. At the end of this uh, little creep, I want you to take a closer look at the design and the structures of these discs. Maybe I didn't have to mention this in the middle of this video, but... These structures on the disc have a lot to do with the electrostatic charge applied to them, especially uh, when it comes to how the shape gives off energy. This fact here is also used by the Beatles to rivetate over the ground. They uh, apply the little electrostatic charge on these shapes, they vibrate and the shapes give off energy uh, that helps them to take off the ground. Что-то у меня не получилось, а в прошлый раз получилось лучше. Где-то. So this is the main point of this whole creep. I want you to take a closer look at the upward part of this prototype. As you see, we have only a motor and a disc. There's no ultrasonic sound pressed over the model, uh, as we always expected. So I brought this script because I wanted you guys to be aware of this little change. Alexei Chekuko made it to this gravifier and still gave him the effect of gravitation. But that is not the end of the conversation. Because I want to take a little pause so you can, uh, you can see this, this closely and their structures. Let's dive into it. А, кстати, вот здесь еще неодимовый магнит стоит. Когда идет напряжение большого высоковольтного генератора на двух этих пластинах, они вращаются одна на встречу друг другу. Но эту схему вы, наверное, уже видели в Ютубе. Вернее, в интернете, короче, много таких э, было передач, посвященных этим тарелкам, летающим тарелкам на, на нацистской Германии. И там как раз вот такая схема была did you notice these structures in some articles that i've read about this uh gravifier many people say that alexei chokukov uh used this metal called bismuth as a disc and that is actually possible but when it comes to the type of disc alexei chokukov used I think the only thing that matter here is something that has shapes and can easily produce and be affected by the electromagnetic fields. I even think he used aluminum discs and covered them with alloy. That looks shiny and can uh, easily trap the electrostatic charge. Because the main purpose here is to find a way the produced or supplied electrostatic charge resonate or work with the shapes on the discs. When you finally get to this point of achievement, you have the chance to build a real frame prototype as Alexei Chekukov did. Что-то я где-то близко, у меня как в секретных материалах, если мы где-то рядом, а понять не могу, что-то упустил. Ну ладно, следующий ролик будет посвящен более детальному обследованию, более подробному обзору. Попробую запустить ее на нет на этом вот барахле. Видите, много проводов торчит, она может Alexei Chekukov supplied the central disc with Tesla coil positive. Upper disc and the downward disc are supplied by electrostatic positive and negative. The theories and analysis in my last videos about the gravifier, we talked about how the toroidal waves are created. 
and how we can even counteract gravity due to the uh, electromagnetic fields, resonances, and that is actually clear and possible. But today I want to tell you a little bit about this experiment uh, that I've done like three months ago. When I was dealing with uh, HP transformers and Tesla coils. I don't know if you get it, but this stuff here have a lot of secrets that need to be figured out. So here's what I experienced when I first cut out these experiments. I took three discs and I turned electrostatic charge to the upward disc and the downward disc. Then after that, I turned the middle disc with Tesla positive. But according to what I experienced there, whenever I turn on the Tesla coil, I've seen the pink glow in the surrounding place between the middle disc and the outer plates. I don't know how this just happened, but it immediately proved me that the only reason Alexei Chekukov had to use this arrangement of church is because he wanted to increase the conductivity of the surrounding air so it can be uh, affected by the magnetic fields of the plates. This is the experiment that I've done when I was dealing with this stuff and you can even replicate it if you want to make sure uh, what I'm saying is true. John Hudson also used the Tesla coils and high voltage transformers when he was rotating the different objects uh, using ultrasonic sounds. And when we get to this point, you should also ask yourself why or what are these Tesla coils and HV transformers doing here in Hudson's experiments. The only reason I don't share these experiments of mine on YouTube is not because I don't want you to be aware of that, but the fact that YouTube may broke some of my videos due to the information that I'm sharing with you guys. So I can't do that. But as long as you stay subscribed on this channel, I promise I'll find a way to share these experiments with you. Let's get back to the video. So when we get to this concept of anti-gravity, we actually know that NASA don't want us to know anything about it. Especially when it comes to how they reverse engineer these platforms. Uh, because it is actually clear, they are still producing a lot of them. These guys are lying to us every time, but the problem is we are accepting their lies. The Adolf's army was one of the most dangerous and powerful army we ever knew in the world. They captured the Aryan spacecrafts and they somehow ordered these Aryans to build UFOs for them. And this trick was also uh, used by the Aryans at Area 51 when they built this uh, platform called ARV or Aryan Reproduction Vehicle. The Nazi also had this material called Grog Bell which is said that it performed the time travel phenomena. I also believe that Adolf used uh, this platform to escape his enemies. But at the end of the days, uh, these guys convinced us that Adolf thrown himself in the acid. For example, when you even go to Wikipedia and search the history of the Nazi, you will never find these words I'm telling you right now. You will never find a word Aryan in the story, spacecraft, and the Grog Bell. You will never find these words in the story. And the reason for a lot of this is they don't want us to know anything about how these platforms really work and that is uh, why any scientist who tries to put this stuff in the public is silenced. The only thing that you are going to see when you visit NASA website is the iron proportion systems and how they are used on the satellites in the universe and how the rockets escape the earth's gravity but that doesn't mean they don't know the secret. The only person who tried to open our mind, even though he was shut down later, is Nikola Tesla. The only person who proved that, that you can produce electricity which moves from one electrode to another in the air. The electricity which has smell, electricity uh, which is visible where it can see moving um, through electrodes. Nikola Tesla wanted to provide free energy to the whole world and this was one of the biggest mistakes he ever made, which also led to his downfall. So despite everything Tesla invented was taken away, he did left us with uh, some facts to depend on, especially his Tesla coils and fabric transformers that produce the highest electrostatic charge. I don't think you also noticed this, but almost every uh, spacecraft uh, we ever analyze depends on this conductivity concept. So if you're also analyzing this stuff, remember to carry out experiments uh, with Tesla coils and fabric transformers together. Believe me. You will figure a lot of uh, phenomena you didn't even recognize before. Жаловались не пользователи, а нефтяные компании, которым что-то не понравилось. И сегодня я решил повторный сделать полет, совершить повторный эксперимент и объяснить некоторые нюансы, которые критиковали мы в прошлых роликах. To everyone who is not sure Alexis Gryfire was real, this is the most important part of this whole video. I'm going to use captions and pauses to make sure you guys uh, don't miss any part or get confused. So, 
without wasting time, let's get started. Как видите, у меня не очень-то надежно. Удалось мне достать вот этот металл, единственное, что, который дает вот этот левитирующий эффект. Как обратите внимание, у него структура, как у подкрылки жуков, да? И при вращении он создает такой вот резонанс поля, который создает этот эффект раздвигания эфира. Сегодня попробую сделать его более, так сказать. Some people said Alexei used strings to hold the gravifier in the sky. Maybe that's how they thought, but in this video, I'm going to give you the undeniable evidence that proves this prototype was real. And after watching this creep, I want you to tell me what you think of this evidence. Because there's no way in hell can you say it's another trick of Alexei Chekukov after watching what he did in this video. Maybe you've watched a lot of Alexei's videos, especially this one, but after watching this whole video, I'm pretty sure you are going to notice something. Then let's get started. Питание от дисков. Сейчас вам покажу, что там ничего нету. First of all, let me explain this script a little bit. I think you also heard these creators saying that he used the strings to hold the gravifier. And let's say he did use those strings. Then how can he move his hand around the gravifier as he did? Remember, this is the first creep. Then let's move to the next footage, where he's going to use the wood proving that his platform is now held by the strings. And this is the most comparing evidence that I wanted to show you. As we did on the first footage, we actually figured out there is no strings holding the gravifier. And the remaining part is the upward part of the gravifier. We want to make sure he didn't use the strings to hold this part. Let's figure it out. This is the end of our video. Did you like it? And do you believe the gravifier was real or was fake? Tell me in comments. I also have a other videos talking about this gravifier. If you want to check them out, uh, make sure you check out the links in the description. See you next time. And already at a strong rotation, a strong difference of potentials occurred in the lateral dilation of the rings, which actually caused the clacking of charts and the smell of a zone. Then something unexpected happened. The broke of rings took off.